Hi guys, today we are going to discuss about business fascination with utilitarianism. I am Danica Ivy May F. Mabera and I am Aramela Kujapik from Little and Let's start! Learning Objectives What is utilitarianism? Applying utilitarianism in business, the four elements, in business and commerce, the corporate workplace. Two types of utilitarian ethics practiced in the business world. The limitations of utilitarianism. Sample article from online library.well.com. Workplace example of utilitarianism ethics. And now let's start to our discussion. First is what is utilitarianism? Utilitarianism is a theory of morality which advocates actions that cause happiness and opposes actions that cause unhappiness. According to the theory, an action is good if it is for the good of the greatest number of people. It characteristically encourages individuals to act in whatever ways they want as long as their action leads them to the greatest levels of fairness. Some of the moral philosophers associated with this theory is Jeremy Bentham, David Hume, Henry Chidwick, and many others. Utilitarianism promotes the greatest amount of good for the greatest number of people. Utilitarianism is a reason-based approach to determining right and wrong, but it has limitations. Next is applying utilitarianism in business, the four elements. The theory of utilitarianism can be applied in business in many ways. To begin with, business person who wish to use this theory must first understand its four elements. However, application of this theory can either be positive or negative. The first element is consequentialism. It is the understanding that the wrongness or rightness of actions it is entirely determined by their actions. Business can apply the concept of consequentialism in their operations, even though it may contradict the moral and ethical systems that are in place. For instance, business that commit themselves to the principle of consequentialism may encourage their employees to act as they wish as long as the essential outcome will be the benefit of the organization. Every business focus on making and increasing more profits of its primary goal, which may lead them to business, which may be considered immoral, unethical, or illegal. For example, a business may manufacture and sell substandard and unsafe products in their quest. For more, even though it is contradicting their moral and ethical systems, because for them it is benefits their organization and can make more profits. The second element that business required to apply utilitarianism is welfareism. According to Eggleston 153, welfareism is understanding that wrongness or rightness or of cooperation depends on society's concept conceptions of welfare or well-being. This aspect of utilitarianism suggests that actions are good for the greatest well-being of the society or many people. According to Sen 471, welfareism aims to maximizing every individual's activities. Sample in business, the management may decide to increase the wages and benefits of their employees if it is improves the well-being or promotes the happiness of their employees. In this regard, the business will be partially applying utilitarianism when they can balance the principle of pleasure and pain and how they can influence their performance. And the third element that business needs to understand as to how the principle of utility applies to their operations is individualism. The principle of in individualism in utilitarianism holds that every individual, as it is human nature, pursues happiness. Thus, will engage in actions that maximize utility. In this regard, businesses will take actions that bring them happiness. Happiness for business may include increased profits, increased customer satisfaction levels, superior reputations, and improved employee satisfaction levels, among others, by ensuring their employees are satisfied and happy at a personal standard. The business will also be putting themselves on the path to their success. And the last is record the apply utilitarianism. And the last element to go to apply utilitarianism in business is aggregation, which is the notion that the wrongness or rightness of actions depends on their ability to average the benefits brought to all individuals. And Bentham's perspectives on utilitarianism 
suggest that the consequences of an action should bring happiness, not only to an individual but also to the community around him or her. A business applying these elements should engage in activities that increase its profits, while at the same time serve the best interest of its customers, the community, and the government. For example, in selling quality and safe products, a business will be increasing its strength value while meeting the needs of their customers at the same time. Next topic is in business and commerce. Utilitarianism holds that the most ethical trade is the one that will produce the greatest good for the great now. The, ne the next topic is about business and commerce. Utilitarianism holds that the most ethical trade is the one that will produce the greatest good for the greatest good. As such, it is the only moral framework that can justify military force or war. Moreover, Utilitarianism is the most common approach to business ethics because of the way that it counts for costs and benefits. And in the corporate workplace, most companies have a formal or informal code of ethics, which is shaped by their corporate culture, values, and regional laws. Today, having a formalized code of business ethics is more important than ever for a business to grow. It not only needs to increase its bottom line, but it also must create a reputation for being socially responsible. Companies also must endeavor to make their promises and put ethics at least on par with profits. Consumers are looking for companies that they can trust and employees work better when there is a solid model of ethics in place. On an individual level, if you make morally correct decision at work, then everyone's happiness will increase. However, if you choose to, this, to do something morally wrong, even if legal, then your happiness and that of your colleagues will decrease. Let's proceed to the next topic, which is the two types of utilitarian ethics practiced in the business world. The jury asserts that there are two types of utilitarian ethics practiced in the business world. Pure utilitarianism and act utilitarianism. Pure utilitarianism helps the largest number of people using the fairest methods possible. An example of pure utilitarianism in business is tied pricing for the product or service for different types of customers. In the airline industry, for example, many planes offer first business and economy class seats. Customers who fly in first or business class pay a, pay a much higher rate than those in economy seats, but they also get more amenities. Simultaneously, people who cannot afford upper class seats benefit from the economy rates. This practice produces the highest good for the greatest number of people. And the airline benefits too. The more expensive upper class seats help to ease the financial burden that the airline created by making room for economy class seats. Next is act utilitarianism. Act utilitarianism makes the most ethical actions possible for the benefit of the people. An example of act utilitarianism could be when pharmaceutical companies release drugs that have been governmentally approved but with no minor side effects because the drug is able to help more people than more bothered by the side effects. Acutilitarianism often demonstrates the concept that the end justifies the means or its worth it. Next is the limitations of utilitarianism. So, although utilitarianism is surely a reason-based approach to determining the right and wrong, it has obvious limitation. The main limitation of utilitarian ethics is that it is difficult to achieve in the workplace. People are taught to focus on self before others, making it difficult to practice utilitarianism. However, with hard work and perseverance, you can create the type of work atmosphere that you desire for yourself and those around you. Also challenging to maintain a business culture where a capitalistic economy often teaches people to focus on themselves at the expense of others. Similarly, monopolistic competition teaches one business to flourish at the expense of others. 
It tends to create a black and white construct of morality. In utilitarian ethics, there are no shades of gray. Either something is wrong or it is right. Utilitarianism also cannot predict with certainty whether the consequences of our actions will be good or bad. It is because the results of our actions happen in the future. Utilitarianism also has trouble accounting for values like justice and individual rights. For example, say a hospital has four people whose lives depend upon receiving organ transplant, a heart, lungs, kidney, and a liver. If a healthy person wanders into the hospital, his organs could be harvested to save four lives at the expense of his one life. This will durably produce the greatest good for the greatest number, but few would consider in an acceptable course of action, let alone an ethical one. However, according to the sample article from online library that community.com, they suggest and support a utilitarian approach to business ethics because utilitarianism is already widely used in business ethic approach. Although it is not well developed in the literature, utilitarianism provides a guiding framework of decision-making rooted, rooted in social benefit, which helps direct business toward more ethical behavior. Workplace example of utilitarianism ethics. In the workplace, the idea of this concept is if you can conduct yourself properly at work, then you will be able to achieve professional happiness. By making morally correct decisions, your happiness will increase. However, if you choose to do something morally wrong, even though it may be legal, your happiness will decrease. Utilitarianism creates a black and white of what is morally correct in the world of someone who uses utilitarian ethics. There are no shades of gray. Either something is wrong or something is right. At work, utilitarianism is displayed by working to make sure the workplace is a positive environment for your co-workers to be in and then make it so for yourself. And this is the end of our discussion. Thank you for listening. Again, I am Arami Arcojabit. I am Danica Ivy May F. Nabera from Bitteled HE2. Bye-bye!